Hey folks, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weigel. You're going to get a sense of deja vu, again. Some of you who've been watching us for a really long time are kind of, kind of scratch your heads and go, wow, I feel like I've seen this before. It was in a completely different setting. It was on a table. There was a black background. He was probably wearing a green shirt and he was probably plus or minus 30 pounds given the time of year and what diet I was on at the time. But today we're gonna to be reviewing Ghosts of Albion. For those of you who are particularly wizard-eyed, for those of you who are particularly honed in on what we've done, we've done this game before. And you're going to be asking yourself, why am I doing it again then? Have I run out of new ideas? Do I not know what I reviewed and what I haven't? Why haven't I reviewed Exalted yet? These are all questions you may be asking yourself. But the reason I want to go ahead and do this was, one, the first time we reviewed this was in 2008. So at least four years ago. And I think four years, if it's long enough to elect a president, is long enough to consider re-reviewing something. The other reason was, when I first reviewed Ghost of Albion in 2008, it was a PDF. And this year at Gen Con, I was able to get the hard copy of this. Quick summary of this game for those of you who don't want to go back into Game Geek's classics and take a look at what this game is. It is a cinematic unisystem that is the same engine that runs Buffy, Angel, and Army of Darkness, and the Eldritch Skies, which we'll be discussing soon. It is the cinematic unisystem condensation of a web series that turned into a novel series created by Amber Benson of Buffy the Vampire Slayer fame and Christopher Golden. The basic idea being set in Victorian era England of a pair of siblings who are the protectors of Albion or England in general. They're high power wizards whose job is to protect it from vampires, werewolves, fae, and other nasty things that go bump in the night. All right, you're saying to yourself, I have Buffy slash Angel slash Army of Darkness. What does Ghost of Albion give to me that I don't have in any of those? Thank you for asking. In addition to a really well-detailed timeline and geography of the era, both in England and outside of it, you get what I consider to be probably the most comprehensive and complete magic system you are going to see from Cinematic Unisystem. You're saying to yourself again, hey, I've got Buffy and the magic box, tee hee, do I need this too? Answer to that, well, if you have Buffy in the magic box, you've been collecting for a long time, but do you need Ghosts of Albion? In my opinion, yes, you do. What this does is it gives you an entirely new breakdown that is very, very complete and also quick to use on building spells on the fly. Now, I should point out that on the fly spell building isn't something that was probably originally intended in the magic system presented in Buffy, Magic Box, and Ghost of Albion. I imagine you were supposed to think about these things ahead of time or find just the spell for just the right occasion in a book, blah, blah, blah. But let's face it, if you're like me, you have attention deficit disorder and you are dying so hard to do a Dresden game before Evil had actually put out the Dresden game, you are looking for any system you could use to throw together spells on the fly, yell fuego, and see something happen. You can do that effortlessly with this engine. Additionally, this also brings in a lot of rules for ghosts and other types of spirits, different types of vampires that would necessarily be encountered in Buffy and Angel, and the, probably the coolest for me are the fey rules. How you can build and construct changelings, full fey, fey influenced, fey magic, etc. The qualities and drawbacks presented herein are completely backwards compatible with every single one of the other games in this line. The only difference being the skill list is slightly pared down from Ghost of Albion or altered from what you would see in Buffy and Angel. For instance, the getting medieval skill, which is very representative of the basic theme and tone of Buffy, has been replaced with armed mayhem. The basic engineering replaces Mr. Fix-It. There are physician replaces doctor, etc. It's not hard to put these together if you're paying attention which one goes where. 
The hardest thing is if you're used to going with the three sets of six alphabetization from the Buffy Angel Army of Darkness, it does take a moment to recalibrate your brain, but I present to you that if I can do it, certainly any of you gentle viewers can do it as well. Now that this is available in hard copy and is available for the world, finally, what would bring you to this rather than Buffy Angel Army of Darkness? A very good question. Buffy, Angel, and Army of Darkness are going to become more and more difficult to find since the licenses for each of those has expired. And therefore, while you can still find the occasionally un occasional unused copy at a used bookstore or a game store, pretty much these are going to be falling into the, yeah, I really wish I would have gotten my hands on Angel when I had the opportunity. Those of us, those of us who have been collecting fanboys for a while have all of these and consider ourselves to be very lucky. Ghost of Albion may in the near future be one of the few presentations of the cinematic Unisystem line, particularly one that can be applied to either historical or modern urban fantasy. If you are looking for a game to supplement your existing cinematic Unisystem lines, if you are looking for a game whose purpose is to sort of drive home the differences in between different genres that can be expressed, or if you're just looking for some slam and good magic rules and hey, I can play a fey, you cannot possibly go wrong with Ghosts of Albion. For Game Geeks, I'm Kurt Weigel. Good day and good gaming.